Gravel riding has existed since the very invention of the bicycle. By default, the very first bike races were gravel races. So don't let anyone tell you that it's a new discipline. What is new, however, is the relatively large investment into the world of gravel riding and the ever-growing calendar of popular gravel events worldwide. It's highly unlikely I'm going to change your opinion of gravel riding in this video, but if you are interested, hopefully you'll find the training tips and the technical tips useful, and if nothing else, perhaps you'll just enjoy the scenery. Branding and marketing activations have wildly increased the popularity of gravel riding, but don't be skeptical because ultimately we as cyclists benefit. Through increased research and development into products and especially tyres, the bikes are now much more capable and therefore much more enjoyable to ride over a wider variety of terrain. Above all else though, gravel riding really offers you an adventure, a breakaway from the confines of your usual road riding and training. Think of a gravel bike as a bike that could really take you anywhere if you want to allow it to. And if you still want to use it as a serious training tool, it can do that too. Picture the scene. It's a busy summer's weekend and everyone's on the roads, busy going wherever it is they're going, and you want to ride your bike. Taking the gravel bike still fulfills the feeling of riding a fast dropped bar bike, but it opens up the freedom of exploring away from the deteriorating road surface with ever increasingly busy traffic volumes. It provides a sense of escapism and freedom that we often seek when riding two wheels. This to me is the beauty of gravel riding. It offers a flexible discipline that enables you to chop and change whenever you please. And also, unless you're really fortunate and live near lots of gravel tracks, it's highly unlikely that you'll be able to do a gravel ride without stitching it together with little bits of asphalt here and there. If we focus on equipment now, the spectrum of gravel bikes starts over at one end where you have lightweight race bikes, and these are very similar to your road race bikes, perhaps with a slightly slacker geometry and a slightly longer wheelbase. This is great for stability on fast sweeping descents. Over on the other end of the spectrum, we have bikes that are built to be incredibly resilient and durable, and most importantly, they're built to carry heavy loads. So these are like the modern day equivalent of a cycle touring bike. It's built to be loaded up with panniers and to wear mud guards and just to keep you moving for as long as possible. So speed isn't the focus on that end of the spectrum. And over on this end, it's very similar to road riding. Let's talk tyres, because fine tuning your tyre choice will make a bigger difference to how the bike handles and rides and your enjoyment when riding off-road. And the biggest thing that you can change is your tyre pressure, but we'll come on to that in just a second. On the whole, gravel tyres are 35 to 45 millimetres, and the larger, the wider the tyre, the higher the volume in the tyre, the more likely it is you'll be able to tackle more rugged terrain and feel confident and comfortable when doing so. You can do little things like adding tyre inserts into your tyre to protect the rim a little bit, meaning that you can also run a slightly lower pressure, which will afford you a little bit more grip. You'll notice that I'm running a fairly narrow tyre and a fairly fine tyre tread. These are great when in the dry, but they're not going to be as practical or as enjoyable to ride on rocky terrain like we're stood in today. The best way to fine tune your tyre pressure is to find a nice square edge and place your front tyre up against it. Put the brake on and put your full weight over that tyre. Aim for a tyre pressure that is going to crease when the wheel is pushed against the square edge with your full body weight. This will ensure your rim is protected most of the time whilst providing compliance and feedback on the trail, but still roll fast enough on the road. If it's wet, you can let a little bit of air out. And if it's super dry or you know that it's going to be really fine terrain, then you can afford to blow the tire up a little bit harder. When it comes to your shoe and pedal combination, there's no real right or wrong, but the guidance is if you're going to be on and off the bike a lot, 
pushing, walking, scrambling up climbs, it's probably better to use a mountain bike SPD style of pedal. However, I much prefer the feel of a road pedal. And I know that on most rides that I do around this area, I'm not going to be off the bike too much, meaning that I can just about get away with riding a road combination. When it comes to my gravel bike setup, I would aim to keep it as similar to my road bike as possible. And that will make the transition from one bike to the other that much easier. The only thing I might consider changing though, is if I was riding over really rough terrain and I was having to pedal a lot on that rough terrain, I would consider lowering the saddle a little tiny bit that will afford you a little bit more comfort and the ability to just skim and float over the top of the saddle but we're not talking about much maybe only two to four millimeters at most when it comes to setting up your bars and your levers i would always start with your road bike as a reference point and then spend dedicated time ensuring that you feel confident on this and the only way to do that is technical training when off-road. You want to make sure that you feel confident and competent when riding off-road because that will make you enjoy the ride that much more. When it comes to riding technical terrain, I would always use the drops. That's partly because you have more force on the brake lever, but also because the drop is a more secure position. Riding on the hoods is great, but you'll need to cling on tightly, but we shouldn't be relying on our grip to give a secure position on the bars. When you're in the drops, your thumbs are hooked over the bars and it just creates a much more secure position, allowing you to have a slightly more relaxed grip on the bar, which will also prevent things like arm pump when riding steep, technical and bouncy descents. One of the most overlooked skills in cycling full stop is the skill of allowing the bike to move around underneath you. This will provide the bike with more traction, more control and allowing you to feel more confident over a wider variety of terrain. And the best way to do this is to loosen off that grip and to drop your heels and just allow it to move to feel the terrain underneath you. It's well worth practicing this on every ride. When it comes to cornering, it's much easier to brake traction when off-road. So working on your observation to read the surface ahead of you is important. On the whole, you want to straight line corners as much as possible when on the gravel bike. Prevent any aggressive lean if possible. But the beauty of this is that on most of the trails, you have good visibility and low traffic, meaning you can afford to take the correct lines more of the time. Line choice on more technical terrain is something you can spend every ride trying to perfect. It's one of the most rewarding aspects of riding and you could tackle the same trail many times over, each time with a different line choice and experience it in a different way because of this. When riding off-road, you'll notice even more the impact that the weather has on the trail conditions. The trails change after every season, but they'll also change after things like heavy rainfall or even a really windy day. And this all adds up to an incredibly technical challenge that is really rewarding on every single ride as you try and master those conditions. Another technical aspect of off-road riding that you may have overlooked is power delivery. It's really easy to break traction when riding off-road, especially on a steep ascent or if it's been wet and slippery. So take time dosing the amount of power into the pedals that you can feel you have traction for. Wheel spin looks impressive, but it is a waste of energy. When it comes to braking, the same rules of traction apply. The only difference here is, to inform you how much traction you have, I actually recommend braking traction. So a quick dab on the rear brake to inform you how much grip you'll have for the upcoming corner. Whilst there are certain scenarios where locking the rear wheel completely and skidding could be beneficial, on the whole, it's best to maintain traction with the surface and moderate your braking accordingly. The only real downside to off-road riding that I can think of is the potential for extra bike maintenance. Depending on where you ride, there's a high chance you'll come into contact with more contaminants than when riding on the road. And if not contaminants, there's a high chance you'll have more grit in your chain. With this in mind, a little more regular washing will be required and also a slightly different approach to lubing your chain. I often run a really dry chain lube, especially if I'm riding in sandy conditions, and that's because it's just that little bit less tacky, meaning your chain won't become clogged and turn into that nasty black grinding paste that you would have seen on older bikes. So a quick rinse after riding in heavily contaminated areas, and then less is more when it comes to chain lube. A dry chain will not clog, but a wet chain will. When it comes to the physical training for gravel, you want to consider each event on a case-by-case -case basis. So let's imagine it's a 100 kilometer event. You want to make sure that you're fairly confident and happy riding for four to five hours in one go. If you've signed up to a multi-day event, then you'll want to consider your overall weekly training volume. The biggest difference though, when it comes to riding on gravel, is that you'll want to consider adding a little bit of technical training into your riding because this will just help you enjoy it that much more. Five to 15 minutes on every single ride that you do dedicated to one aspect of technical training, whether that's cornering, braking, or a technical climb, will really help you get more out of your gravel riding.
Because the physical demands of road and gravel riding are so similar, the two disciplines complement each other incredibly well. If you'd like to find out more information about training, including our free to download training plans, head over to the Lacole Cycling Club training pages now. I hope you enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you again soon.